Good morning, we are Charlotte Goes to Space. We are from Cicero, and right outside of Chicago, Illinois. Our school is the largest in the nation. My name is Stephanie Juarez, and these are my partners. I'm Aileen Lopez. I'm Gisela Munoz. And I'm Daniela Ortega. The essential questions that we set out to answer are, can a spider's sex survive in microgravity? Will the spider's sex hatch in a microgravity setting? And will the spider's behavior and, and physical characteristics change? For our initial design, we initially designed our experiment on crystals, but seeing as other students were planning on doing the same thing, we wanted to be a bit more unique. With the observation of my basement and the amount of spiders there were, I suggested using spiders. <laughs> With the help of our mentor, Christian Martinez, a PhD student at UIC Wiselab, he helped us improve on our experimental design and um, no, more knowledge on spiders. Terrarium set up. We set up six 10-gallon tank terrariums, and in each we set up a detrital food web. We also, oh, with the goal of setting up colonies of spiders to produce egg sacs. We achieved this by placing isopods, columbola, and spiders. We also added two inches of soil and leaf litter found, from our, found around our school. The isopods then would break down the leaf litter, creating fungal growth, which the columbola would graze upon. The spiders would feed on the columbola and produce egg sacs. Once a week, we would monitor our terrariums, adding moisture and leaf litter as needed. Our test tube setup, we chose to use six egg sacs, which gave us the possible total of 108 eggs because we noticed our spiders were attaching their eggs to the plastic lids. For this reason, we chose two egg sacs on plastic, meaning the material we used to cover our terrariums. We used two leaf litter and two with no substrate, which means we removed them from the glass. The results to our essential questions are, yes, the spider eggs did survive launch, yes, the spider eggs did hatch, and in fact, two out of the six sex eggs had evidence of hatching. It is very likely that the spiders practice cannibalism as a way of survival, and as evidence, a very large spider was found. <laughs> and lastly, and sadly, the spiders did not survive re-entry to Earth. The first image shows the spiders after landing in, in Kazakhstan. The second image shows the very large spider that was found. And if you look closely at the last image, it shows the spider eggs that developed but never hatched. Continuing with our previous results where we had sent six Diplocylia concolor egg sacs to space, we had also found several other organisms that had hitchhiked a ride on our leaf litter. We also replicated our 6 x sac nanorec experiment with an earthbound test tube as a control to compare the outcome results. When comparing our results, we found an identical proportion of egg sacs, both found in space and on Earth. This led to our conclusion that the limiting factor with hatching was not space, but most likely moisture. And in order to provide moisture for our spiders in their test tube, we added a damp cotton ball. In conclusion, we believe our spiders did not survive re-entry into Earth because of moisture and too much microbial growth. The excess moisture may have been the cause of too much fun fungal growth in our test tubes. Oxygen Gen level and test tube time could have also affected our spider survival. Um, the, oxy the test tube was in a way like an oxygen tank. The more time the spider spent in the test tube, the less oxygen there was as time passed. What we would change if we had the honor of testing this experiment again is we, might, we would predetermine the exact amount of moisture needed in our test tube and then determine 
determine the exact amount of water needed to promote survival but limit microbial growth. We might also change the species we use, like instead of spiders, we might use columbula or isopods. We would also like to thank Cicero School District 99, Unity Junior High School, Exxon Mobil, and the Wise Lab at UIC. Their support, their support made it possible for us to participate in the SSEP, thanks to the NCESSE for guiding us throughout the experiment. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions from the, uh, for the team from Cicero, Illinois? Hello, my name is Russell Holbert from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Um, did, both, did both the ground truth and the microgravity sample have the same number of eggs? Yes, they both had the same amount of eggs. And then they both had the same amount hatch? Yes. Awesome, that's really cool. Thank you very much. My name is Noah Barnhart and I'm from East Lyme and I was wondering how this would benefit the astronauts. We weren't really planning on helping the astronauts. <laughs> we were actually trying to figure out if the spiders could develop in space and hatch and survive. So maybe later on we could use this with humans, like can humans um, be born in space, can they develop correctly, and the same way as they develop here on Earth. Thank you. I'm Liz Kenick from Teachers in Space and the Space Frontier Foundation. And I'm wondering when your spiders were returned from space, were you able to analyze them? Could you tell whether they had developed the same way that they would on Earth? When they came back, we actually opened the test tube and we had, a, um, we had our mentor, Christian, help us examine them under a microscope. And we do believe that the spiders did develop the same way here because they did hatch. They didn't come out of the egg sac, but they did hatch, and we believe that they were the same as the ones that hatched here on Earth. We're not sure because the spiders were actually dead when they came back, so we're not 100% sure. Hi, I'm Glenn penkoff Lidbeck from Connecticut. And uh, one of the, the challenges of, of this experiment or any of these experiments went into space is the tight and small confines of the FME. Um, were there, or were, did you think at the time about the possibility of how long it would take for different species of spiders for their eggs to hatch, or did you have an idea of how long it takes for these particular spider eggs to hatch since they were gonna be confined for five or six weeks up in space? Um, we actually picked the ones that were um, the closest well, we, we had our terrariums, and we would mark the egg sacs we found on that day. So we tried to use egg sacs, the freshest ones, so to say. Um, and we also put them in a cooler because we knew that would, like, retard the time of their development. So they could be kind of, like, start developing at the same time. And let's thank the team from Cicero, Illinois.